unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. Praise God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hebrews chapter 9 verses 22. If you're there, you say amen. By what was Moses? How did you get there? Hebrews chapter 9 and verses 22. If you're there, you say, Amen. Say, I please God. Now, the Bible says, And almost all things are by the law purged with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Somebody shout, Hallelujah. Almost all things are by the law purged with blood. And without the shedding of blood, is no Remission. If blood is not shed, there is no remission. Give me the amplified of that. He says, in fact, under the law, almost everything is purified by means of blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is neither release from sin and its guilt, nor the remission of the due and merited punishment for sins. Did you hear that? He says, in fact, I read it again, that under the law, almost everything is purified by the means of blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is neither release from sin and its guilt, nor the remission of the due and merited punishment for sins. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. There is no remission of sins. There is no takeaway of sin. There is no release from sin and guilt, nor the remission of the due and merited punishment for sins. We have taught people about the remission of sins, and quite a number of you who are in Fanero have grown, you've drawn to the understanding, the appreciation, and the faith that indeed that there is, there is a remission of sins in Christ. Somebody said hallelujah. Of course, I don't think that every man on this ground believes fully that truth and reality in God. But I believe that almost majority of us, if you've been sitting in this ministry for quite some time, you do not argue that the remission of sins is given through Christ. Somebody shout amen. But today I wanted to talk about its guilt. Because you see, some people ask for forgiveness some people repent in their mind and say, God, I, I'm sorry, I, I, this is the wrong way to go, this is the right way to go, and that's all right. But they do not know and understand that not only has God released them from the sin and its consequence, but he's also released them from the guilt thereof. So yes, they believe that they are forgiven, because they believe in the justification through faith. They believe in the imputation of righteousness. To whoever believes for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And are justified freely through the redemption that is in Christ. They believe that they are, they are forgiven. They believe that there is redemption through Christ. Even before they say I'm sorry. They know that they are forgiven. You understand? Even before they received sorrow, the blood was shed. They know it. You understand? They know it. Repentance is agreeing, is an agreement. It's, it's agreeing with truth. That indeed, because of what Christ did, I'm not supposed to go this way, I'm supposed to go the right way. Somebody shout hallelujah. But we have seen people who have received the imputation of righteousness. David says, blessed be the man of whom the Lord imputes not sin. 
but he imputes righteousness. We have seen people who have believed the forgiveness of sin and the imputation of righteousness, not according to works, but according to faith. And they have understood that and perfected that. But many people have not dealt with the guilt problem. They still carry the guilt and the condemnation thereof. Praise God. In the New Testament, dispensation, guilt means that you're under justice. You are under the judgment of God. You're answerable for your sin. And therefore, you're under condemnation of God. That's what guilt is. You understand what I'm saying? Some have received forgiveness. They believe in the righteousness imputed. They believe that they are forgiven. Jesus shed his blood. They have believed on him. John says that the world shall be judged of sin because they believed not on Jesus. That's the greatest sin in the world. It's right there. John 16 verse 9. He says, when he is coming to the world, let's go in the verses before. He says, when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. And he says, and of sin because they believed not. Not because they were sinners, but because they believed not. The, the, refusing to believe Jesus is the worst sin. It's the only unforgivable sin. That's blasphemy to the Holy Spirit. That's refusing the free gift. The Bible says he's the propitiation of our sins. And not only for us, but for the world. Jesus died for all men. Jesus forgave all men. Even before they knew it. The only difference is that they have refused to receive that forgiveness. Somebody say amen. That's the only difference. They have refused to embrace that forgiveness in Christ. That's why people have not received salvation. And it is pride. Why? Because they're telling God, we don't need your forgiveness. We're good. We'll make it without your forgiveness. Your blood is not important. Who is understanding what I'm saying? Now, this is the point here. That yes, now we have transitioned many of us to the place of understanding the forgiveness of sins. I know I am forgiven. I know he is the ultimate sacrifice, the propitiation. I know that righteousness is upon me, imputed on me. Not because of what I do, but because of what Christ has done and my faith in what he has done. Even if you did the worst sin and you're a believer, you are still the righteousness of God in Christ because the righteousness, that which is of God, in Romans 3, is very clear. It is not by works. It is by the faith. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, even the righteousness which is of God. I'm not about your righteousness. I'm not, about, I'm not talking about your religious righteousness. I'm talking about the righteousness which is of God. Eh? Romans 3.22. He says, the righteousness of God, which is, what is it by? By the faith of Jesus Christ and to all and upon them all that believe. For there is no difference. He goes in them, he says, for all have sinned. And come short of the glory of God. But they are justified freely through the redemption that is in Christ. Because it's not about what they do. It's about who they believe. So whether you did what, if you're a born again believer, you are the righteousness of God. Now of course then the question always that I find. And this is not usually with people who understand the message. It's usually with people who don't understand the message. They always ask. So that means they're telling people that they can continue sinning. Wow. How did your righteous mind think like that? How, how did your righteous mind assume me to be teaching evil? He says, to them that are pure, all things are. But to them that are unbelieving, eh? you know, you have to get to a point where you're not believing. To them that are unbelieving, and, and there is nothing pure to them that are defiled and are unbelieving. So it's a believing problem. Firstly, you have to have a believing problem, problem for you to, to, to behold nothing as pure. I am not saying that that means that we should do anything because 
we are righteous regardless of what we do. No. Firstly, we must understand our nature as Christians. Nothing, nobody born of God deliberately, habitually, you understand? Knowingly practices sin. For God's nature, the Bible says, abides in him. His principle of life, the divine sperm, the Bible says, remains permanently, permanently within him. And he cannot, he cannot practice sinning because he is begotten of God. It still doesn't take away the fact that I'm still the righteousness of God in Christ. That means nobody born of God can wake up and say, now let me sin because I'm the righteousness of God. No, that one, I said, is not born again. It will sink as I continue to repeat some things. You know, there are things that are supposed to be repeated. Paul says, I bring these things to you in remembrance to you, even though you know all these things and be established in them. They are established in these things. They know all these things, but he says, uh-uh. I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things. There are things that must be repeated. They should never be stopped to be said. They are important to, even if you're established in grace, it's important to continue hearing certain things. Otherwise, the devil can make you leak. You know those leaking cisterns that hold not water? Jude talked about them. Before you know that, you either get extreme and then you start to abuse the grace of God to a place where all the limit, all the little self-controls you had, they go off because you're under grace. Or you become legal. So these things are there to teach you to stay in the balance of faith and grace. Somebody shout hallelujah. Guilt is a spirit. Some people have received this forgiveness. They've received the righteousness imputed to them on them by faith. But they still carry guilt. I know God forgave me. But I still feel condemned. I still feel guilty. And because of that... Even in my life, I anticipate certain consequences. For example, I don't deserve a good wife. I don't deserve a good husband. I don't deserve a good job. I don't deserve healing. I don't deserve breakthrough. I don't deserve good children. I don't deserve... There's a very fa famous artist, a, a music artist. Um, she used to sing back in the early 80s and 90s. It was a favorite to Pastor Sam. But... This lady sang, or oh, some of you probably know the story, some of you don't. If you don't, I'll not say the name. But she went live one time on social media. She produced a child. I think this child became um, sort of like autistic, right? And then in her, later she joins a certain spiritual movement. And then she starts to tell people that the reason why her child is autistic was because she had aborted earlier. And I'm thinking, but not all women who have aborted have autistic children. Or not all with autistic children have aborted. Hello? But she now thinks, uh, the claim it's a punishment from God. Actually, a kid was, uh, yeah, so I think autistic or cerebral palsy, one of us. Says this is a punishment of God because of what she had done in the past. That's what guilt does. Guilt still holds you answerable one day to your past forgiven, forgiven story. It still says, even though God forgave you, but one day, that thing you did in 92, it will come back. Karma, right? Isn't it? That is the teaching of the devil. You have been released both from sin and its guilt. Somebody shout hallelujah. <laughs> Ezekiel 21. The Bible speaks of men which had given themselves allegiance to Nebuchadnezzar. Praise God. Give me the amplified of that. 20, verse 23. Ezekiel 21 verses 23. It says, 
and it shall seem like a lying divination to them who have sworn oaths of allegiance to Nebuchadnezzar. Will he now fight against their homeland? But he will remind them of their guilt and iniquity. Did you hear that? He will remind them of their guilt and iniquity in violating those oaths that they may be caught. Do you know what code is? Captivity. That they may be brought to captivity. That means every time a man reminds you of your past story and the guilt thereof, you are held in captivity. You are held in captivity. Captivity is the spirit of limitation. Some people don't know that they're in captivity because they confuse captivity with bondage. If they put, what do they call those things which they used to arrest people? I don't know their names because I'll never be, but cuffs. You said it. If they put cuffs on you, right? They have bound you in cuffs. If they throw you in a prison, you're in captivity. You don't have cuffs on you, but you're limited on where you can move. It's the very spirit of limitation. He says he shall remind them of their guilt and captivity. And they will be caught. And what does the next verse say? And therefore thus saith the Lord God. Because you have made your guilt and iniquity to be remembered. In that your transgressions are uncovered. So that in all your doings your sins appear. Because I say you have come to remembrance. You shall be taken with the enemy's hand. Because you are bringing back iniquity in your faith. You are carrying a guilt conscious. You're bringing back the old story. You will be taken with the enemy's hand. Literally, the devil will hold you and drag you and destroy your future. Why? Because you're still held in the past. Yes, God forgave you. Move on. Don't look back and carry guilt. Otherwise, you're opening a door on your life that will hold the enemy's hand, that will bring the enemy's hand on you. That's why some of you are still sick. You're guilty. So some of you are struggling financially. You're guilty. So some of you, your marriages are failing. You're guilty. You've received forgiveness, but you still carry a guilty conscience. I'm expecting punishment. I'm answerable for the consequence. Listen. Psalms 103, verses 10. The Bible says he has not dealt with us after our sins. Somebody say that statement. One, two, three, let's go. No rewarded us according to our iniquity. Say it. He has not. He has not. He has not. Oh, they, you know, God can forgive you, but there's consequences to your sins. I understand. What do you mean? You're opening a door for people to remember their sins and to carry the guilt thereof, even when they know they're forgiven. Oh, some don't even believe they're forgiven. And what happens? The hand of the devil gets on them. And when the hand of the devil gets on them, indeed, they're afflicted. And when they're afflicted, they think that they're afflicted because of the consequence of sin. No, they're not afflicted because of the consequence of sin. They're afflicted because they're reminded of their iniquity and guilt. That's what is afflicting them. That's what's killing people. Yes, you messed up in 92. Forgive, forget, chite, move on. And if somebody raises their mouth on you, oh, you did this in 92, stand up straight and tell them, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, for he has not dealt with me as my sin or rewarded according to my iniquity. That's the devil. That's the voice of Satan. I rebuke you for thou sufferest not the things of God, but the things of man. I refuse to put myself under your words to think that because I messed up in 1992, therefore my future is going to be messed up. Oh, I rebuke you, devil. 
There is even someone on the ground right now saying, I still think you're going to be taken by the enemy's hand. But if you know what I'm saying, that's why I hate religion. Because religion never forgets. Religion never forgets. The man of God who messed up in 92 is still messed up. Even when he repented and moved on. The brother who messed up in 79 is still fallen up to today. Somebody say, I hate religion. Forgive yourself. God forgave you. But refuse to listen to the words of men who convince you that because of what happened, you're forever bound. One time a woman walked to me and told me, Apostle, if I tell you the list of men, God can't give me a good man. <laughs> Apostle, if I tell you the list. And I told her, then Rahab would not have grandmother Jesus. <laughs> Who understands what I'm saying? You read the women, eh? <laughs> In Jesus' life, all of them had issues. Rahab. Who else? Tamar, you mentioned all the women in Jesus' story. But Sheba, you mentioned all of them. Sarah, what? You mentioned the whole lineage. Rachel, you mentioned as a thief. Mention! You mentioned any woman. He wasn't born by perfect mothers. But they still wrote history. What am I trying to tell you? God hates sin. It's so sad that you fell into it. But you are forgiven. Move on. Be better. Be better. Praise God. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Now, <laughs> I believe in my spirit. Let's go back to what I was saying that he has not dealt with us according to his, our sins. He says, for as is the heaven high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards them that fear him. And the Bible says, as far as the east is from the west, they're not talking about the map of Uganda here. He removed our transgressions <laughs> and the 13th verse says and like as a father pitieth his children so the Lord pitieth them that fear him some people they have built their own grace eh, and made it the grace of God so when their grace ended God's grace also ended praise God he has said as far as the heaven above the earth. How many kilometers or nautical miles are there from the earth up to heaven? You don't even know. And then you're here judging people. You, <laughs> you're judging people yet you don't know how many nautical miles are from us eh? up to heaven. But you're judging people with your grace. Your mercy. And you have a few little things of your little childhood stories when your father and mother used to overbeat you so you already have bitterness in your spirit and rejection. You're adding it in your human limited grace eh? and you're putting it on someone. You're claiming to be God. Leave God's people alone. He will... Deli Listen, men of God, God has not called us to change people. He has called us to give them Christ. Let Christ change them. Somebody shout hallelujah. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 8 verses 11. He says it will never be necessary. Now this is the mystery about the love of God that leads to forgiveness. Takes away sin and guilt. What people think is that when a man is forgiven, the guilt is taken away with and the consequence. People think that the man continues to sin more. And I know why Satan has preached that kind of lie. Because he knows that when men know the truth, they'll have true liberty. But now let me break it through scripture. He says, and it will never be necessary for each one to teach his neighbor and his fellow citizen 
of each one of his brothers saying no, that is perceive and have knowledge of and get acquainted by experience with the Lord. In that day, he says, nobody will be telling a person, get to know God, get acquainted with him, have an experience with him. No, nobody. He says, for all will know me from the smallest to the greatest. And then he explains why. Next verse. For, for I will be merciful and gracious towards their sins. And I will remember their deeds and unrighteousness. No more. What are you? Did you get what I just said? Now, do you know why a man knows God? Do you know why a man experiences God? Do you now see why a man has the full experience of the power and the anointing of God? Why? Because the more God extended mercy, the more God extended forgiveness, the more God refused to count their unrighteousness, the more God continues to forgive them. Men get to love him. Men get to fall in love with him. Men get to experience him more. Every time he looks away from a man's sin, the man draws closer to him. Every time he looks away from the man's unrighteousness, the man draws closer to him. Every time he extends mercy to the man, the man draws closer to him. That's why they call it redeeming love. We want you. We want you. You know the devil. The devil. We do, you know, even God warned you that is coming for a church without spot, no wrinkle. Without spot, no wrinkle. How does the church grow to the place of no spot, no wrinkle? Ephesians chapter 5 verses 25. Woo! He says, husbands, who is a husband? Christ. Husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, listen, that, that, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word, by the word, that he might present it to himself a what? A glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that it should be holy and without blame. How does it do it? He loves it. So God loves you into glory. God loves you uh, uh, until spots leaves you. God loves you until wrinkles leave you. God loves you until blemishes leave you. God loves you until holiness leaves you. There's that cast song. They, they call it reckless love. Oh, the overwhelming, never failing, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me and what? 99. I don't deserve it. Uh huh. Uh huh. Still, he, his love. Uh huh. All the foe. He recklessly loves you. He says there is no mountain he won't climb. When he's coming after you. You're messing up and he says, Lubega koma wo. Lubega koma wo. I want you. I want you. Come now. Let us reason together. Hallelujah. He chases you. He chases you. Until he finds you. He leaves the 99 and he says, ah. Oh. Then we say, I don't want, I'm crazy. Then he gets on your back. Well, Ming, never ending, reckless love of God. Uh-huh. And a mic. Fight still, I'm found. Leaves the 99. I couldn't earn it. I didn't earn it. I don't deserve it. I don't deserve it. Still, you gave yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love. Sing again. Oh, oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, never 
unending reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the night to night. I don't earn it, uh -huh. I don't deserve uh -huh. it, still you gave yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Wow, it's reckless. You don't deserve it, but it chases you down. It fights until it finds you. Ladies and gentlemen, that is why men repent. That's why he says, despises not the long suffering of God and his goodness, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. They despise the long suffering. They despise the for forbearance. They make people think that the more we present God forbearing and long suffering and good, they give the impression that people will continue to sin. That is despising God. That's you telling God that your way is better than his way. That's the goodness that brought us to repentance. Some of us, if it was not love, we would not be here. Do I have a witness in the house? If God did not tell me that I've forgiven you and I will not remember your sins anymore, some of us would not have been in the presence of God. We would have felt unworthy, unqualified. But he fought until he found us. We came in his presence, accepting to be beaten and killed and mauled. And then mercy found us. Grace engulfed us. His love overshadowed us. That's why we're in the presence. Some people ask themselves, why do you come every Thursday? Love. Every time you come, you feel loved. Even when you're rebuked, you feel loved. Even when you're, you're encouraged or established or you, you feel loved. And love never fails. Tell your neighbor, love never fails. The Bible says in Corinthians chapter 7 verses 10, it defines two kinds of sorrow. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 7, verse 10. He says, it defines two kinds of sorrow. He says, godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of. But the sorrow of the world worketh death. Now, how do I know that someone is in the sorrow of the world? The sorrow of the world always points to the ability of man. Humanism. God, I'm sorry, I'm going to do better. Whoa. So why do you need a savior? The sorrow of God says, God, I'm nothing without you. It will take your grace, your mercy, and your power to change me. I yield to it. I am your righteousness. Now repentance has begun. Repentance is not just, that's why you are separated sorrow and repentance. Repentance is change of mind, metanoia. Change of direction. I was going this way and I said, uh-uh, this is not the right way for me to go. And then I turned like that. That's called repentance. But repentance is not what takes away sin. The shedding of blood does. Some of you think that without the shedding of blood, you'll take away sin. You're ignoring what Christ did and you think that it's enough to say you've repented. Repentance is not complete without the shedding of blood. The shedding of blood precedes repentance. The testimony of the shed blood of Christ at the cross will always precede your repentance. Otherwise, many people, the more they draw into repentance, they actually throw away the blood. Because every time they repent, they point again to their ability to make right. No. Repentance begins from understanding, that's why you died for me. Because I could not. Then you begin through that blood to say, you know what, God? I messed up last week, but I'm your righteousness in Christ. I am born of the divine sperm. My nature cannot deliberately, habitually, continually sin. I rebuke this thing. It's not me. That's a man who has understood. That's repentance. That's repentance. Now, you come out of meeting me and somebody says, those guys don't, don't believe in repentance. And you're like, what demon is on people? Do you understand what I'm saying? 
Are you hearing me? Unfortunately, they've never quoted me in a sermon. Because they know if we open the Bible, <laughs> they're in deep trouble, man. Seriously. We read the word, man. Seriously, man. Seriously. <laughs> Seriously, man. We, we were not taught the philosophy of Theos. No, we experienced the person of Theos. We transitioned simply from knowing him as men knew him. We went to know him as he is because he took us beyond men. We went from the progression, gnosis. We went to epignosis, the advanced knowledge. We went to the end of that knowledge from simply believing to the knowledge of believing. Where we are beyond believing, we know. But Paul, Paul calls it persuasion. He says, for I am persuaded. That nothing, 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 nothing. No, it's I don't believe. I am persuaded that nothing, I don't think. No, I am persuaded that nothing shall separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ. You, you can't convince me that God doesn't love me. Mwah! Grace will be God. You can't. Listen, he sent Jesus for you. How can a man come and tell you, you know, God has reduced his love? <laughs> Those are in the persuaded things. He says, for I'm persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, no powers, no things present, no things to come. <laughs> no height, no depth, no any other creature shall be able, shall, shall, shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ. That is epignosis. That is not progressive. If it's still progressive, then you don't know God yet. Praise God, somebody. I am persuaded of his love for me. I am so persuaded of how much he loves me. Oh, the Lord loves me. He loves me so much. Praise God, somebody. So he spoke of that godly sorrow. That Worketh repentance. And the ungodly which worketh death. And look at what godly sorrow did in the next verse. He says, For behold this self same thing that you sorrowed after a godly sort. What carefulness it wrought in you. You see? It, it, not you wrought in yourself. That godly sorrow wrought in you a certain carefulness. It worked in you a certain carefulness. The Bible says, uh, What clearing of yourselves. Yeah, what indignation. What fear, what vehement desire, where, what zeal, what revenge. In all things you've approved yourselves to be clear in this matter. Why? Because you've understood what it means to be sorrowful in the godly sort. Sorrow in the godly sort always reminds you of what God has done. Sorrow in the worldly sort always points to your strength, your ability. And without God, you are nothing. But you see, every time you go into the worldly kind of sorrow, it always points the mirror back to you, to the self, to think that you can do it, you can fix it. And guess what? You can't. You fail every time. The hand of the enemy is on you. Listen. Refuse to be reminded of past stories. Refuse. This was Paul's ardent commitment. He says that I set my eyes on things ahead. I refuse to look back. Paul literally, that means Satan will try to throw you back. Nay, nay, you who did this. How do you deserve this? He's always bleating in your ears. He's bleating in your ears. Speaking wickedness. Bringing back those stories to tell you, how do you, you did this. You, you, you did this. You, know, you did this. No. Forgetting the things which are behind you. You messed up, yes, move on. He loves you. Godly sorrow is working in you. How many of you feel you're better? Exactly. We are all a work in progress, but I tell you I'm better than I was in 2016. I'm better than I was in 2015. And I'm definitely going to be better next year. Definitely. Why? Because... I am sorrowful in the godly sort. 
I refuse to look back on the guilt and iniquity. So, learn your lesson. What lesson? That he should do better next time. So again, you're putting it back to his ability to do. And what happens? The devil whoops you. You fail again. Because God is trying to tell you, you can't without me. When you get to that full apprehension of what God does and should do in your life, when you start walking right, you will never boast. You will never boast and say, you know why I'm not sleeping around? No. You will say, my zip is up because of God. I'm not taking alcohol because of God. I'm not crazy because of God. I know a believer, a fellow believer friend. Many years ago, we were, we were doing something. And then somebody annoyed the guy. Then the guy walked to this, this, this guy and told him, if you had found me without God. <laughs> 30 seconds only. He told him, I just need 30 seconds with you. Only 30, 3-0. They are enough to disfigure you. You're lucky because I have God. I understand what he's saying. Without God, you makara baba. There are people I look at here and I'm like, ah, yeah. Even you, you came to pray. <laughs> Do I have a witness in the house? Listen, all of us can be crazy if we choose to. But that man, that man, <laughs> Anja Gaza. <laughs> now, the, the writer of that song gives you the reason. You see that? When the sins were washed away, he caused the man to love. Some of us, it's only God. We would have. Hey! But love constrains. He says the love of God constrains. Constrains me to forgive you. It constrains me. You annoy me, I look at you and I still love you. Because the love of God constrains me. I'm a new creature in Christ. You talk evil about me, I buy you a meal. One time there was this man of God who, he said very bad things, evil things about me. And I wanted to curse him. I wanted him to eat sugar and he dies. And then I found him one time in a supermarket. And this guy pretends like everything is okay. Abosa! The spirit of the Lord told me, burn him with love. I got an amount of money, very heavy in my pocket. I told him, man of God, I can't meet a man of God like you and not so in you. I gave him money. And after I walked out, I was like, I'm a new creature. Behold, the old past and all the new and all things are of God. How could I give that guy money? Me, that's how I am born again. It's not the prophecy. Huh? But getting my money out and getting, oh, then I knew as a new creation. Do I have a witness in the house? Hi, brother. Do you know I love you? Then the kind of man is saying, Listen, I'm going to heaven. I know it. And if you reach there and you don't find me, you're not in heaven. Somebody shout hallelujah. Let go of the guilt. Forgive. That thing taught me because I realized I'm entirely kept by the power of God unto salvation. Hey, isn't that what the Bible says? Kept by God. Kept by the power of God unto salvation. Kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation. You see, he keeps us to save us. 
from the time I understood that I don't judge men. If she's messed up, that's hand her God. Why? I could have been too. What separates me from her madness? You understand? What is she doing that you could not do, Agnes? So you mean to say you're more righteous? Mama, when it comes on people like those ones, eh? you don't remember when if a brother is overtaken by fault, eh? he says, you who are spiritual, eh? restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. Lest you yourselves be tempted. That temptation of judging the weak, eh? ay, 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 ay. The day it hits you, you'll never judge again. Some of you, that's why you're even struggling. Because every time you look at yourself, you say, Father, I thank you because I fast twice a week. I give tithes of mint and coming. I, I do this and that. But you see, look at that one. For her, she doesn't pray. She doesn't do this and that. And you know what? The Bible says God instead chose that fellow. That's why it says heaven, publicans will go there earlier. Some people will find some of us taking tea. When they are still in a long line, they'll find cults in heaven. <laughs> Bongaring with Paul and Peter. While they are still in a line and they're like this. <laughs> Why? Because on Christ the solid. Sinking sand, oh, before the throne of God, I have a strong and perfect plea. A great high priest whose name is love. Whoever lives and pleads for me, my name is graven on his head, my name is written on his heart. I know that while in heaven he stands. And can beat me that's deeper. No tongue can beat me that's. I love the next verse. Sing it. When Satan tells me to despair and tells me guilt with thee, that word I. Who made an end to war? He made an end to war. Oh, because the sinless Savior died, my sinful soul is counted free. For God, the justice satisfied. Look on you and pass on me. To look on you and pass on me. Behold him there, the reason love, my perfect spotless righteousness, the bread and tangible I am, the King of glory.
see it is he the one who saved you he will take you some people say oh people say say yeah yeah say yeah yeah yes the bible says behold I show you a mystery we shall not all sleep we shall be caught up old songs of the crusades of long ago say yeah yeah say yeah, yeah. Say, yeah, yeah. look at religion say yeah yeah say yeah, yeah. Say, yeah, yeah. <laughs> me I'm going praise God even the ones who present who who, 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 who who attack that word they also hear another one attack it without revelation will be caught up Even the old musicals of the hymns, they used to say, I will fly away all over the night. 
Praise God. Anyway, if you're here and you have not received the redeeming love, come and receive him as your Lord and Savior. Come. And say, tonight I want to receive that love. Come, 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 come. Come. Come, come. Say, if you're there, you say, I today need that Jesus. I want to be born again. I want to receive that love. Come, 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 come. Come here. Brother, come. Come and receive Jesus. Come, come, come. Come running, come running. Come, come running, come running, come running. If you're there and the gospel you received at first is not this one eh? and you feel like nah, yeah, mm -mm. come and receive the real one come 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 if you're not sure of your salvation come and make it sure if you received an angry God come and receive a loving one Sometimes when I hear people talk about God, even me, I can't receive him. There's a God else I can't accept. If you're here and the God you've been knowing is different from the one I've just preached, come and receive the right God. Because some of you could go to hell with another definition. He says they preached another Jesus, another gospel, another spirit. Paul says that we did not give. He says you bear them yourself. Receive the true God. Come, 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 come. Come, come. Jesus loves you. And that love will draw you every morning. It will change you. My heart in my soul must see. God loves you. God loves you. And he will get everything that is not of him out of you. You will end with him. Perfect and mature in him. Built up in him in all things. Hallelujah. As you behold in a mirror, see Christ is washing the church every day by the way and it's the only way we can have no spot or wrinkle as we continue hearing the word the word cleanses us the word cleanses us the word cleanses us right now there's a cleansing that has been taking place on your spirit whatever the devil thought he had on you in the mighty name of Jesus every spirit of guilt every spirit of not forgiving yourself every spirit of condemnation the feeling that you're answerable to judgment it is cast in the name of Jesus and the hand of the enemy is judged on your life it's judged, it will never come in Jesus name, say amen repeat these words after me say Lord Jesus I have heard you today I have believed and come to the knowledge that everything you have done is love. You have done everything. You fought your way to bring me to you. And like you have drawn me, you will sustain me. So today, I believe with my heart and I confess with my mouth that you are Lord. You have become Lord God and the Savior of my life. I submit my life to you. Take control. My old story has no power or consequence over my future. 
In Jesus name. Amen. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at Uma Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero. Make manifest.